Welcome to the Amplifier install tutorial. In this lesson, we are going to be going over the necessary steps it takes to install an amplifier. An amplifier will not only make your system sound louder and better overcome road noise, but it will also create an improved clarity and detail for your speakers, creating a better experience for you or your customer. In order to install an amp, you will need an amplifier install kit. Amp install kits come in a variety of gauge sizes. The most common gauges are 4 gauge and 8 gauge. Refer to your amplifier's manual for proper gauge size requirements. Included in this kit is a power cable, ground cable wire, amp turn on wire, a fuse holder, and a fuse, and all necessary crimp connectors to connect those wires. You will also need a set or sets of RCA signal cables. This depends on how many channels you will be amplifying. Your kit may or may not be supplied with speaker wire. If you are powering subs, three to four feet of speaker cable will be enough. If you are powering inside vocal speakers, you will need enough wire to run down from your amp to each speaker you are amplifying. The minimum tools required for installing an amp are a Phillips screwdriver, a soft panel removal tool, a utility knife, drill and bit set, a drill gun, a socket and ratchet set, and a wire stripper and crimper tool. Before you begin your install, make sure to disconnect the negative terminal of the car's battery to prevent a short circuit. In some vehicles, disconnecting the battery may require you to re-enter a security code. So before disconnecting, make sure you have the factory stereo's anti-theft security code on hand. The amp install is broken up into six main steps. Step one, panel disassembly. Step two, running the cables. Step three, wiring the amp. Step four, wiring the head unit. Step five, installing the fuse and step six, setting filters and gains. Let's start off by disassembling the area for our signal and power cables to be ran. Since we will be running wires down both sides of the vehicle, let's remove both side kick panels, door scuff plates, lower trim panel, upper trim panel, and if needed, the seat belt cover anchor. Once that is complete, disassemble the dash. If you are unfamiliar with how to disassemble a dash, watch my video on how to do so in the how to install a car stereo install tutorial. Once dash is disassembled, pull out the head unit so that we may access the stereo's RCA output and amp turn on wire. When installing an amplifier, run the power cable first. It is a good idea to run the power wire down the same side as the battery. This will help in having enough cable left over for longer vehicles. Look for a spot on the firewall where you can drill a hole into the metal. Sometimes a vehicle will have a removable piece of foam on the firewall, and behind it will be a marked spot where a wire could pass through once drilled. Use a drill bit to cut a hole for the wire, and if you need a bigger hole, use a unit bit to increase the hole diameter. Once the power cable has been passed through the firewall, do not run it to the amp's location because we will need to run it along with the amp turn on wire. So for now, leave the power cable at the kick panel and temporarily secure the power wire in the engine bay close to the battery by using a zip tie. Run the amp turn on wire through the dash to the side where the power cable is located. Now it is time to run the power cable and turn a wire to the amp. Run these cables down the side of the vehicle. Do not run the power and remote cables across the gas and brake pedals. Run them at a slant downwards across the floor of the vehicle. Then proceed to run them through the sill plate, middle pillar, rear sill, and through the seats. Sometimes it may be easier to take the seat off and run the power cable underneath it. You can also use what's called a snake and pull the wires through that way. Now that the power cable and the remote turn on wire have been ran to the amp, let's go ahead and run the RCAs to the amp. Remember to run them down the opposite side of the power cable and the remote wire. The reason we do that 
is so we don't induce noise into the system. I'm going through here. So. After you have ran your power, remote, and RCAs to the amp, grab your ground cable from the amp kit and run it along with the amp wires where the amp is located. Strip back a half an inch of insulation off each wire. The red power wire goes into the 12 volt input on the amplifier. The blue remote turn on goes into the amp turn on input on the amplifier. The black ground cable goes into the ground input on the amplifier. The RCAs are labeled red and white go into the red and white inputs on the amplifier. Once you have completed inserting all of your wires, go ahead and connect the speaker wires from the speaker wire output to your subwoofer. If you're not using a subwoofer and you're powering inside vocal speakers, go ahead and run the wire to each individual speaker. Before we can complete the amplifier wiring at the amp's location, we must first ground the ground cable to the vehicle of the body to complete the circuit. To do this, find a bolt near the amp's location, scrape away any paint and clean the bolt's location completely, and then bolt the terminal tightly to the vehicle's metal chassis. If you can't find a convenient bolt, use a self-tapping screw with a star washer and screw the ring terminal down. Pay careful attention to what's below the spot where you are drilling. In the earlier section, we removed the stereo from the dash. We removed the stereo for two reasons. One is to connect the amp's blue turn-on wire from the amp kit to the amp turn-on output on the back of the stereo. The blue turn-on wire tells the amp to turn on when the stereo is turned on. Reason two is to plug in the amp kit's RCAs to the RCA output on the back of the stereo. These RCA connectors are what supply the amp with a musical signal to be amplified. Let's connect the amp turn on wire first. On the back of the aftermarket stereo, look for the wire labeled amp turn on. It's a blue wire with a white stripe. Connect this wire to the amp's blue turn on wire we previously ran to the amp's location. If you are using a stock head unit like we have in this Toyota Corolla, you have two options. You can purchase a line-out converter that has an amp turn-on wire built in, or you can tap to the stock head unit's ignition turn-on wire. The only drawback to this method is sometimes you may get what's called an amp turn-on thump. This sound can damage your speakers, so the best option is to buy a line-out converter with an amp turn-on wire built in. After you have connected the amp turn-on wire, plug in your RCAs, either into your stock head unit's line-out converter, or if you have an aftermarket head unit, plug it into the RCA outputs on the rear of the stereo. After you have completed plugging in your RCAs and connecting your amp turn-on wire, leave the stereo out. Just in case, you may need to correct something later. Let's move back into the engine bay where we can install the fuse holder. To install the fuse holder, strip back some of the power wire by using the cutting section of your crimping tool. Insert one end of the fuse holder into the wire and tighten the screw onto the wire. There should be no straight power wire coming out of the fuse holder. At this time, go ahead and prep the other side of the wire that will connect to the battery. Then insert the fuse and connect by twisting the end caps together on the center fuse housing. This cable will connect directly to the vehicle's battery by crimp ring. This connector is supplied with your amp kit. Crimp it onto the power wire using your crimp tool. Then insert on the positive terminal of your battery. Let's first set the filters on the amplifier. If you are powering a subwoofer, use the 80 Hz setting on the amplifier's dial controls. Set the amp to low pass 
to only let low pass frequencies pass into your subwoofer. If you are powering inside vocal speakers, set your amp to the high pass filter. This doesn't allow the low bass frequencies to reach your inside speakers, resulting in distortion. Also set the high pass filter to 80 Hz. These are both good reference points for your subwoofer or your high pass filter on your vocal speakers. Let's now set the gains. To set the gains, set the gain control on your amplifier to its minimum level, which is counterclockwise. Put in a good reference CD and turn the CD player's volume up until you hear distortion. Once you hear distortion, stop. Turn the volume down just until the distortion disappears. Doing this maximizes the signal to noise ratio and leaves your system less prone to engine noise problems. Keep the volume setting there. Now on your amplifier, turn the gain controls on the amplifier up until it reaches the loudest volume at which you will play it at. If you hear distortion, slightly decrease the gain settings until the distortion is gone. Now your amplifier is level matched with your CD player. You can turn the volume almost all the way up and not damage your speakers. Once you are completed with the amp install, reassemble the dash and also the panels. Thank you for watching the videos. Look for more of my videos on my website, www.theconnectedcaraudio.com.